Hello and welcome to another What Is video presentation series. In this particular example, I'm going to use What Is UBA or What Is User Behavior Analytics. So without further ado, let's jump straight into this. Now, we've seen this before with regards to the ArcSight portfolio. It's a number of products and solutions that addresses a number of things. And we can see that there is a component in here that says ArcSight User Analytics. That is UBA. That's the User Behavior Analytics solution. And what it does is it sits at the top end of this. So what we need to do is we need to collect log data from the underlying systems and applications and devices. We use, in this case, the ArcSight data platform to do that collection and distribution. We then have the UBA solution that's then receiving that data and doing the security monitoring based on the rules, processes, anomaly detection, analytics to address that. SIEM or Security Information and Event Management, specifically the ArcSight ESM solution, does a really good job of, of identifying the known. We know the kinds of indicators that would tell us that an attack is occurring and ESM is great at doing real-time correlation focused specifically on that. In the case of analytics, it really works in the unknown environment. It's telling us things we don't know. It's identifying unknown activity, anomalies, and unusual sets of things that are occurring. Analytics is incredibly powerful at doing that. In the case of the UBA solution, it addresses it around uh, users, identities, and more recently in the latest release around entity information itself. So uh, the underlying devices, applications, and systems too. Why don't we have a look at the expanding landscape that we see? So we, we're seeing the types and the vectors of attacks that could be used. And in most cases, we can see that this is around some key basic profiles. You're talking about getting access to uh, users, user information, and accounts to get access to the compromised systems and get that information, get that data, compromise the system to make it unavailable, to take that attack hack to the actual systems that we want to do that. So it's really focused around malicious users, careless insiders who don't look after their account credentials. It's about, uh, unfortunately, about compromising those accounts and ultimately compromising those systems. But the problem that we have from a security point of view is that we have an expanding scope of data applications, uh, on-premise, off-premise. We have many credentials for each of our users. And in fact, actually, the user base is growing as more and more people within organizations require access to more and more applications to do their job. So we have this expanding threat landscape that's just making the scenario worse. And in fact, actually, when you look at the report data, I, and it, it really depends on who you want to talk to, but the, the figures are still the same. When we see how organize, organizations are breached, when we see how organizations are breached, we can see that they use legitimate credentials. We see that they have access to compromised accounts, which are genuine and real, that then get access to the data and, and exfiltrate that information or block access to applications and render them difficult to use. So that's the problem. It's insiders. It's how do we identify how those uh, careless insider users, those compromised accounts are used against us. That's the key issue here. And that's what UBA is used to address. So what are we doing here? Well, we're trying to look at and map together a number of specific things. So we have the underlying activity. Remember, this is log data. We're collecting this information, the activities. Who did, who did what, where, and when? So what activities did they carry out? What systems did they log into? What applications did they interact with? It's also mapping that with their access rights. Now, this is different to the net activity. This is understanding what does that person have access to? What rights are they allowed to use? What are the, their authorization aspects that they have? Uh, you know, what, what are their roles, for example? And then ultimately mapping it back to the identity of the person. So not just looking at usernames and trying to infer something, but actually looking at who is the person and what is their username and of course it's multiple usernames so they're going to have multiple user accounts so what are their user accounts what does that reflect on their access rights of what they're allowed to, to actually physically access and what roles do they have and then ultimately mapping that to the activities that they actually carry out on those systems and that allows us to define and understand through UBA, through user behavior analytics, learn what the normal set of activities are so see what is normal and then help us identify what's the 
abnormal. That's the good bit. That's the identifying the unusual, the unknown, the things that we aren't aware of already, and using that to help us through this mechanisms, identify things like uh, prioritize the risks, identify the abnormal behavior, and use a contextual visual investigation capability to start to understand how did a user do things? How did they walk through applications? What access rights did they increase or decrease? And what activity did that physically map to underneath? That's what UBA is providing to us as a capability to help identify the abnormal and help us under, and, and identify those unknown things that we didn't know previously. But of course, we're looking at key solution areas and things that we need to focus on. And of course, there's so many different areas and use cases we could address. It really helps to have focused, specific sets of, of capabilities that we can really dig into and add value. So things like what we call high-privileged account monitoring, data exfiltration, identity and access intelligence, and then finally, cyber threat analytics. And then identifying the users and entities across those really helps us to identify that unusual or unknown activity to identify what's the threats accordingly. So let's dig into a, a couple of examples here. So in this case, we can see uh, user behavior analytics identifies as the stealing of certain trade secrets. We have a software engineer that has their appropriate entitlement. This is what's been given to them and what they have access to according to their role they're allowed to do. They they have access to these sensitive trade secrets. Uh, maybe it's the, the secret recipe for Coca-Cola. But the problem is, is that we need to identify what's the normal activity types. What's What are they doing that's normal? and therefore what's abnormal? What's the frequency? When do they do things? When do they turn up to the office? When do they leave the office? When are they accessing systems that they wouldn't normally access? When are they doing it at unusual times? What are the systems and how are they interacting with those? Remember this goes back to the activities. And then ultimately comparing those activities to the other people in their group, their role, their location, their job title, even to the, the ones that share the same manager, comparing those activities between them. So in this particular example, it's very simplistic, but we, we can see that they're carrying abnormal times, doing things out of hours. That's unusual. We can see that they're carrying out suspicious activities on devices and systems they've not used before, and certainly from an unknown source. And then ultimately, when you compare those activities to how the other people in this group particularly behaves and interacts, well, suddenly it becomes very obvious that they're carrying out abnormal behavior and doing things that are, in this particular case, symptomatic of stealing trade secrets. That's how UBA works. It's comparing and defining what those aspects are and making the comparisons and using analytics to do so. Of course, that's not just a, a simplistic example. We've got some great success stories around, for example, looking at terminated user activity and, and seeing when a particular person should no longer be working in the organization, identifying that and, and then carrying out activities. And of course, we can do that. We can map that with their user, their identity and their activity too geolocation based anomaly detection we can see things coming in from locations that sh clearly shouldn't be occurring we can identify what's the normal activity in baselines and then identify what's the unusual you know, for example if you are based in one location and one office and occasionally visit different ones within the same region country or, or physical continent that's okay but then suddenly you start logging in from a different location now that would be unusual but if it was completely out of role and completely in alien to any of your peers within the same group, suddenly that becomes very powerful to be able to identify. And then confidential data egress by email. So what we can use is using analytics together where we can identify a set of of unusual behavior where we're sending, for example, email to personal addresses, and then we're sending very large attachments which, which we've never sent before. Now again, an individual occurrence where you just send a large file to yourself, that could be you just want to read a report at home. But when you're sending a large volume, network traffic, to your own username or derivative of your personal name, again, that's what analytics is doing. We're filling in the gaps. Then we can start to 
blend these te things together to identify that in this particular case, somebody's accessing files, maybe through DLP, uh, identifying that they're trying to breach policies that are blocking certain activities and then using ways to by bypass those. UBA is able to identify the unknown, map those things together to identify that confidential data has been leaked out. It could even be down to things like audit log tampering. So we can identify when people logged in, cleared things, logged out, and carried out other activities that they shouldn't have access to. So again, it's about identifying what's normal, what's abnormal, and therefore identifying when something is being done that's against policy. And then finally, what about an example of a flight risk user? So somebody that's at risk of at, at leaving the organization abruptly and, and taking data with them. So, you know, Typically, people start coming into the office at later and leaving earlier, taking longer lunch breaks. Again, this is activities. Maybe they're accessing web servers and applications that they to do with job site and searching. Again, that's unusual. Now they're starting to upload particular files and documents or even taking high volumes of data uploads of, of documents. Again, we can identify that through analytics, not necessarily understanding the precise aspects, but comparing that with their peers, having a high percentage chance of identifying those flight risk users so we can understand and start being able to address this before it actually occurs. And these are just scenarios and samples that we've had directly from customer situations where we've worked with them around the use of UBA. So these are genuine and real situations where we've been able to identify through analytics and peer group analysis the ability to, to spot this kind of activity without explicitly having to use fixed rules for doing so. And of course, that's not just the only thing. In this case, we're talking about HPA, so this highly privileged uh, access accounts. So in this case, we could look at things like rare interactive logon for a service account. It's a very specific window scenario, but now we're looking for a logon account that should only be used very infrequently. Suddenly the frequency increases. An account is re-enabled when it was previously disabled and then disabled for a short period of time, for example. That's a classic scenario to hide audit trails. Again, it's a frequent frequency, it's a behavior, it's an anomaly in comparison to everything else. A network user adding and deleting a new interface for a network system when nobody else does that. And again, it's to bypass network security policies. So to bypass the monitoring that might be occurring on a particular network segment. Again, we're looking at something that's never happened before, happens for a short period of time, and in comparison with other entities, users or behavior is unusual. So we can identify this suddenly occurring and then being corrected. And then finally, a user from a training department badging into a server floor room. So this is a classic access, physical access scenario. Typically they should never be in there. We don't necessarily control or stop it. And it could be an innocuous reason, for example, delivery of something. But if a user may be authorized to do so, we don't expect it to come up. And if they're doing things that are then ultimately, for example, doing it in an interactive log on to a server, well, that gives us some great indication from an analytics side of things that this is unusual and it's unknown and therefore it's, it's something needs further investigation. And of course, we could even look at data exfiltration. We've used these scenarios already. For example, you know, sending data to external domains with sensitive information, tripping over DLP policies uh, as they try to exfiltrate the data, large data volumes, which in comparison with their peers is extremely unusual. Uh, we do expect to send emails in and out on a frequent basis, but in comparison with all our peers, if we're sending out two, three, or even four times the volume, especially out of hours, from an analytics point of view, that becomes a statistical unusual behavior is an anomaly. Therefore, we can start to identify and compare very easily that kind of activity. And then finally, we have an example here around compliance documents. So at this particular one, we can see that there's a highest number of uh, documents being sent to a USB. That's okay. Again, we're using things like DLP and file monitoring. But when we start seeing a very large number of documents grouped together, the risk again is very high that that could be then exfiltrated. So we can start to identify that in comparison with other sets of activity, but also again with the peers within that particular person is carrying out. So the value here that UBA is providing is the ability to identify who are the bad guys, ultimately who are the compromised users that have access to these systems but are doing things that they shouldn't be doing.
We have the ability to prioritize how that activity is occurring. Peering this group uh, and uh, tearing this analytics together so that we can have a cascading aspect to increase the priority. One infraction against doing something unusual, for example, working at the weekend, is unusual but not necessarily a bad thing. But if, for example, you start working at the weekend and now you start exfiltrating and sending large volumes of data through email to yourself, and you're accessing, for example, job sites to try and find alternative employment, well, that becomes incredibly suspicious and we want to prioritize accordingly. We also want to have the ability to do an efficient investigation. And again, we shouldn't neglect the fact of what UBA is doing here, which is not just identifying the unknown, but it's also linking together those activities. So at what time did I log in? What IP address did I have at that time? And how did that map to the activities that I actually carried out? And then having a, an intuitive investigation workbench that allows us to just browse through that data in a graphical format to see what I did at what time, and then pivot around that for when I start doing lateral movement across different servers. That becomes a very efficient way to carry out an investigation. We also need to be able to resolve things faster, and that's the beauty of UBA. We can identify this activity, we can identify and start resolving and investigating and determining whether this is genuine or not in a much faster uh, way than we've ever had before, specifically around these unknown scenarios. And then finally, we've actually had it proven and we've worked out the numbers on a number of scenarios with customers. The return on investment around using UBA for specifically these unknown kind of scenarios is extremely good. So we talk about a five to one return on uh, value on this one, specifically because it's going to give you the kind of insight that you've never had the capability to use before. That's a very quick run through of the UBA solution, what it does, how it addresses things, and some of the high level advantages that it provides as its capability set. Thank you very much for your time.